Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. As 2023 closes, I first wanna say a happy new year to you guys. I hope that 2023 was a good year. And if not, you know ways of improving it for 2024. I've had a very interesting year, a lot of ups, a lot of downs and everything in between. But at the very least, I was okay with everything that happened in 2023 and look forward to the new year. So uh, I really hope that is going to happen for you guys as well. As we close out this year, I wanted to do a video of the top five rifles of 2023 that I actually didn't get a chance to do a video for. I've been able to do a little bit of filming for some of these, but really haven't done a full kind of once over review of this rifle and um, wanted to share the top five Seems from like you can this year. Than I can. We'll get into that in this anybody. video, but I need your guys' help. Please rank the different rifles in the order of when you want to see the reviews come out. Uh -oh. Uh, I'm going to try to get some out before I leave for SHOT Show, get some out You're after uh, SHOT Show as well, and kind of explain a little bit why oh, I haven't been able to get the videos out as quickly as possible. We'll get into that in this video as well. Also, if you don't already know, I am running a podcast. It's called the Live, Laugh, Lark Podcast. My man, Hefe Actual, who is usually behind the camera, and myself are doing a podcast to kind of talk about uh, our discussions, either behind the camera or off the camera, uh, when we're working out or whatever the case may be, and wanted to share that content with you guys as well. So I'll leave a link in the pinned comment as well as in the description. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel uh, or given me a thumbs up, comment down below, any of that type of interaction really helps out the channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. Okay, so let's get into it. The number one rifle from 2023. These are going to be all rifles that I have either gotten into the channel or purchased myself and am working on a review, but just didn't get it to it uh, this year. The first one that we're going to be talking about is one that I purchased from my friend, the 1776 <gasps> USA 3.0 on Instagram. And uh, he got me hooked up with this Arsenal SLR 106F, and uh, this is actually a really, really cool rifle. Uh, this is a 5.56 AK, so more 5.56 AK content will be coming in in 2024. That's an area I think that is going to be key for the US market because of the love for AKs, but also the love of 223-556. Having more options in the AK platform is always great, um, but this unfortunately is no longer offered in the US from what I understand. And if you can find one of these, it's going to be uh, worth the money in my opinion. We'll talk on that in the uh, future videos, but I just wanted to do a once over on this in a future video to talk about uh, why I bought it, um, what, what makes this better or worse than some of the other ones that are out there, and uh, just kind of give you a really cool once over on this rifle. But uh, again, I gotta say thanks to my buddy for letting me take this off his hands, and uh, I'll be able to share it with you guys from there. So there is the Arsenal 106F. The next rifle is one that was sent to me from the manufacturer and is one that I think is going to check a lot of blocks for a number of people. Is it right for everyone? I don't know, but I do have a lot of pros that goes along with the cons as well, but we are going to be talking about the PSA Jackal in an upcoming video. This is a rifle that has been fun to shoot so far. I have already talked about this over on Instagram. So if you guys aren't following me on Instagram, you can uh, check out a lot of behind the scenes stuff over there. But so far, this has been, like I said, a lot of fun to shoot. Now this is a 14.5 inch, one and seven twist pin and welded barrel. So that gives you an overall length of 16 inches, but still gives you that kind of sweet spot when it comes to the 
5.56 round in a barrel length that is going to give you optimal performance as well as reducing the overall length of the rifle as well. So uh, that's something I really did like about this. And a lot of other features with this that really kind of makes it stand out. In a sea of AR platforms, this is kind of the ugly ducking ugly duckling, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And uh, it has some really interesting takes on it. I will also be comparing this to the IWI Carmel, which I've done a review on, uh, kind of an initial look, and putting more rounds through both of these to uh, give you a bit of a comparison. So more to follow on that one. All right, so the next rifle is one that uh, will kind of please a lot of the uh, Milserp guys in the crowd, and that is going to be a Mosin M44 carbine. I have one here, this is a Soviet version, and I actually have another one, which is a Romanian Ooh. version as well. Uh, both of these rifles are really, really nice. Um, they have obviously some, some wear to them because of their age. Uh, they have some pros and cons between the two of them. We'll talk about the, um, those differences in the video as well. And uh, I really haven't gotten around to doing a review on either one of these rifles because I wanna be able to stretch out the legs on both of these. And I wanted to see what I could do to get out to 400 yards. In order for me to do that, I need to do a little bit of research to understand the uh, ballistics behind the 762 by 54R which is a caliber that I haven't really experimented very much with or really haven't shot hardly at all. So being able to take both of these rifles, get them sighted in correctly, and then stretch their legs out to at least 450 yards is going to be uh, a lot of fun. And uh, I would probably say a little bit challenging as well, using only iron sights at such a Distance for me will be um, a little challenging since I am right, so starting to have issues with my eyes. Yards. So needless to say, um, these two are going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I've already shot right the two. Romanian yeah. M44. A lot of fun shooting that one. The Soviet has yet to had an opportunity to shoot, but there you have it. Much report. Just to the right, looks like. Got Tarkov in the background. <laughs> it's fairly well. Okay, so the next enough. rifle is one that has a lot of sentimental value to me and it is going to be a replica of the rifle that I carried when I was in Afghanistan, and that is going to be the M16A2 with the red dot on a gooseneck mount here. And this is going to be almost identical to the rifle that I carried when I was in Afghanistan. Now, naturally, I'm not going to be able to fully clone the one that I had, because that is going to be a full FN upper with Knight's armament, uh, quad rail and hand guards and, and all of that jazz. But this is going to be kind of a budget version of what I carried when I was overseas. And uh, I got it pretty close. There's some, there's some differences. We'll talk about that in the full length video, but at the very least, this has been uh, a lot of fun to pull together. And we'll get into all the specifics on this in that video. At the end of the day, like I said, a lot of fun and uh, has a lot of memories from when I was overseas. Okay, the last rifle is going to be one that is also a Milserp and one that I've already done a video on of a different version of it, but this is the one that I've always wanted to have in my collection and that is going to be a Yugo SKS. Uh, this one I picked up earlier this year and just have not been able to get it out to the range as of yet. There are uh, a couple things I wanna make sure that I get checked out before I actually get it to the range. I 
loaded some rounds in here and then tried to unload to make sure that everything was uh, functional or functioning correctly and had an issue with uh, the round getting stuck in the chamber. So I'm gonna take it to a gunsmith just to make sure that everything's good to go on this before I start shooting it. Um, maybe need to hone out the chamber, I'm not sure, but we're going to get into that and find out what the problem is before I actually take it to the range. Uh, again, this is one that I have been seeking for a very long time, ever since I got my Chinese version of the SKS, and it has been a lot of fun to shoot the Chinese version anyway. So I can only imagine that this one's going to be a lot of fun as well. So uh, it's got some uh, interesting uh, kind of character to all of the wood. And you know, you've got that flat bannet on here, which is super cool as well. But uh, at the end of the day, I wanted to um, have a little fun. And again, see what I can do to kind of stretch the legs out on this rifle try to get it out to three, 450 yards, somewhere in there, and see what I'm capable of doing with iron sights. So there is number five. Now I'm gonna leave it to you guys to see which one you want to have um, a video done first and then rank them. And you know, the first video you'd like to see down to number five. Now I do have an honorable mention that I wanted to talk about in this video as well, because uh, I've already done a, a video on it, but not like a full video. So we'll get into a full review on that this particular rifle. This is Anya. This is my Atlantic Firearms build kit that I uh, was able to purchase early this year. And uh, let me tell you, it is, exactly what I've always wanted in an AK. I love the underfolder. I have a special place in my heart for the underfolder since it was the first rifle that I carried when I was in Iraq to do a foot patrol. Um, if you guys are interested in hearing that story, uh, I did that over on the Pearl Snapped Tactical Podcast. You can check out uh, that. I'll leave a link in the pinned comment as well. Uh, tell the whole story about how I ended up with an AK underfolder as my rifle to carry on foot patrol. It was really a uh, fun interview and uh, it's a cool story, I'd say. But uh, at the very least, I wanted to do a kind of a, a homage to that, but at the same time, do a bit of a kind of Mad Max uh, fallout type of uh, rifle as well. And uh, also have something that I can carry around on my property in Wyoming. Uh, to take care of any type of animals that don't need to be near me. <laughs> so with that being said, there are my five rifles that need a review in 2024. The ones that I didn't get to this year, but these are the five of my most favorite rifles from this year as well. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Sound off in the comment section down below. Which one do you want to see first and which one or which order would you like to see them as well? Let me know down in the comments. I would greatly appreciate it. We've got a lot of great content coming out in 2024. I have obviously SHOT Show coming up here in just a few weeks. We're gonna see what's new in the industry. I uh, would love to hear what you guys have to say about that as well. Let me know down in the comments who you would like to see me uh, visit while I'm there. I have the podcast still rolling. Season two is going to start on the 1st of January. So I'm excited about that. Uh, we're going to try to get some guests on to the podcast as well. And, uh, you know, kind of liven things up a little bit more than we already have. <laughs> With that being said, thank you so much for an awesome 2023. Your guys' support of the channel means so very much to me. Uh, I am hoping to change things up a little bit in 2024, do a little bit different content. Um, I'm considering launching a new YouTube channel as well to kind of supplement all of the stuff that I'm doing on my land in Wyoming. Talk about the different types of off-grid type living, you know, rural living, that type of thing. And uh, we'll take it from there. At the end of the day, I wish you guys a wonderful 2024 and we will catch you in the next video. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Here comes a high five. Thanks y'all, take care, bye.